The 21st century will go down in history as the age of robots and artificial intelligence. But back in the 50s and 60s, engineers were already creating amazing robots, dreaming of a world where science fiction would meet reality. In this video, we'll show you the most amazing examples of robots and gadgets created over 70 years ago. And we'll also bring the pictures of the past to life by reaching out into the present with Polo AI. In 1961, Hughes Aircraft Electronic Labs planned to revolutionize the world with Mobot, a mobile robot for any task. Two versions of the robot were created, the heavy Mobot Mark I mounted on a forklift and capable of picking up objects weighing up to 150 pounds or 68 kilos, and the light Mark II, so precise and gentle that it could help comb your hair or zip up a dress. Developers planned to equip their robots with sensors, computing circuits, and algorithms that would allow them to perceive the environment, navigate, and make decisions without human intervention. Prototypes were controlled by an operator, which was still impressive for their time. For example, the Mark I had grippers with adjustable force. Behind each arm was a TV camera, which allowed the operator, after some training, to very accurately assess the distance to the object. Mark II could lift up to 20 plus pounds or 11 kilos. Its grippers had inflatable pads with adjustable air pressure in it. This gave the robot the canniness it required. Robots were predicted to have a great future like putting out fires, building underwater laboratories, assembling space stations, and even exploring the moon. The AROC robot, which appeared in the 1970s, was created by Ben Scora, who assembled it from scrap parts. Inside an aluminum frame, the robot had two 12-volt car batteries, 15 electronic motors, 35 relays, and hundreds of solid-state integrated circuits. Instead of a skull, it had a motorcycle helmet, instead of arms, an exhaust from a dryer, and instead of hands, rubber gloves. There was a microphone in the control panel and a speaker in the helmet. The robot could be controlled with a TV remote using FM radio signals. Pretty rad, right? But what it could actually do wasn't all that impressive. For example, vacuuming, which the latest Neo Beta just learned, by the way. AROC was also able to mix drinks, talk, take pictures, walk your dog, and lift objects weighing up to 70 pounds or 30-something kilos. Its walking speed was almost 3 miles or 5 kilometers per hour. The robot could also bend at the waist at a 45 degree angle and rotate its upper body left and right. Many asked why it looked so creepy. But that's the beauty of it, isn't it? Wabi sabi, baby! Now the most gigantic robot in our selection for today is, ironically, the Beetle Robot. Introduced in 1962, the Beetle was created by the military to work in conditions of crazy radiation. Specifically, the robot had to interact with hypothetical nuclear engines of strategic bombers, which, by the way, never saw the light of day. The developers, who spent, at the time, a monstrous one and a half million dollars on the robot, claimed that the beetle could lift an egg without breaking it. Interestingly, inside, behind a foot or 30 centimeter thick lead walls, there was supposed to be a human operator. For his comfort, there was a heavy-duty AC, an 8-hour air supply, and get this, an ashtray. You know, things were simpler back then. To connect all the components together, the engineers needed 400 miles or 640 kilometers of wire, which you have to admit is quite a feat. However, the robot had a tiny drawback. Like a Koenigsegg, it would constantly break down. The military tried to source it to NASA, but the agency politely declined. The first robotic lawnmower appeared in 1959. H.C. Webb & Co.'s radio-controlled electric machine was traveling the world at the time and was presented, among other things, at the Miracle Garden exhibition in Paris. 
Hailed as the lazy gardener's dream of paradise, the robot could move at nearly two miles or three kilometers per hour and had a range of a quarter of a mile or 400 meters. A pair of 12 volt car batteries powered a quarter horsepower electric motor, giving the mower a runtime of about two and a half hours. Independent suspension helped smooth out the bumps and a 14 inch or 36 centimeter blade kept lawns tidy. Controlling the robot was as easy as any radio-controlled car today. Plus, you could use the same remote to turn on the sprinklers on your lawn. Neat, huh? Why didn't the robotic mower era take over the planet then? We can only wonder, but the web robot was forgotten, like many of its metal brothers born in the same era. More amazing robots and inventions await us next, but for now, I want to clue you in on a little gem called Polo AI. This service helped restore videos and bring photos of the first robots to life. Actually, it gets up to a lot more than that. Here, you can create images and videos from scratch, or based on other images and videos, choosing one of the many models. There's also a lot of ready-made AI video effects. Thanks to advanced AI features, you can fly, hug your loved ones, become a superhero, add muscles, or create your own portrait in the style of the legendary Studio Ghibli. The collection of effects is constantly growing. This is a great opportunity for both experienced prompt engineers and newcomers to AI content creation. Polo AI has collected all the most popular and advanced models for photo and video generation. For example, for video generation, you can use the Creme de la Creme, Dolly 3, or Stable Diffusion 3, or Imogen 3, and the Flux model family. And you can generate videos here with the much talked about Kling AI, Google VO2 with improved realism, Wanx AI with greater generation efficiency, and Hun Yan, which provides cinematic video quality. Polo AI lets you generate cool videos in just a minute, whereas most platforms take about five. Check it out and be amazed. It's free to try and we'll come back to it at the end of the video. But right now, we're going to show you one of the world's first humanoid robots. Ladies and gentlemen, I would be very happy to tell you my story. I'm a smart guy as I have a very good brain of 48 electrical relays. That's how Electro the Robot introduced itself to the crowd at the 1939 New York World's Fair. The robot was over 6'6", or 2 meters tall, and weighed almost 260 pounds, or 120 kilos. It could perform a total of 26 tricks, like walking, saying 700 words, counting, singing, and of course, smoking. Although all of its responses were pre-recorded, its go-to phrase was, My brain is bigger than yours. At 55 pounds, or 25 kilograms, it certainly was. After the World's Fair, Electro traveled the country selling appliances for Westinghouse, the company that built the robot. At the time, the machine seemed like a simple publicity stunt, but the developers were actually pioneers trying to turn sci-fi into reality. Moving on, did you know that robot cars almost appeared back in the late 1950s? At that time, an engineer at Vladimir Zworkin's Radio Corporation of America proposed an idea to solve the problem of a growing number of accidents on the road. Its essence was not just to create an autopilot, but to build a whole smart highway. And they did. The first one was demonstrated by RCA at the state of Nebraska on October 10, 1957 on a 400 foot or 120 meter stretch of public highway on the outskirts of Lincoln. Just two years later, journalists took a ride on the highway of the future already in Princeton. An experimental car from General Motors drove autonomously around a track using sensors on the front bumper to detect an electrical cable embedded in the road. The cable transmitted signals that warned of obstacles ahead, and the car could autonomously break or change lanes as needed. A special receiver on the dashboard interrupted the car's own radio to announce upcoming exits. Surprisingly, the steering wheel and pedals in the car were replaced with a joystick and an emergency brake. It's a shame that 65 years later, we're still in the process of developing and introducing such miracles of innovation, although we've been promised them just about now? This next one, not exactly a robot, 
but it was half a century ahead of its time, so we thought it deserved to be on the list as well. Meet Hugo Gernsback, the man who coined the term science fiction and created a number of knickknacks. Among Gernsback's many ideas, such as an electric hairbrush or a battery-powered backlit hand mirror, were television glasses. He first described them in 1963. The TV glasses were about 5 ounces or 140 grams and were based on small electron beam tubes that ran on low voltage current from tiny batteries. Because there was a separate screen for each eye, it could display stereoscopic images, much like today's 3D virtual reality glasses. Whether people would get headaches from these glasses remains a mystery. It's worth mentioning that Gernsback proposed ideas for many inventions that became reality, such as radar, telemedicine, computerized partner matching, electronic newspapers, and personal health trackers. He also proposed things that are still waiting to be put into action. For example, lunar mining, orbital mirror arrays, and teleporting ham sandwiches. What's your favorite so far, folks? Let us know in the comments. The Unimate robot has gone down in history as it started the era of industrial automation. The development of the robot began in the mid-1950s, and in 1961, it was already working on the General Motors assembly line. The machine performed jobs deemed too dangerous for people, like transporting castings and welding them car bodies. Unimate was a six-axis machine that mimicked the human shoulder, elbow, and wrist. This hydraulic robot had program controls, a memory system, and digital optical encoders for shaft positioning. The 3,000 pound or 1,360 kilogram prototype could lift parts weighing up to 100 pounds or 45 kilos. There was no programming language for the Unimate. Instead, the operator moved the machine's head to the desired position, which was registered by a detector and so on, until the entire required sequence of operations was duly recorded. Although Unimate first began operating in American factories, it became a real star in Japan. Industrial giants in the land of the rising sun competed for the right to become Unimate's manufacturing partner, and in a rather tough battle, Kawasaki's aircraft industries won. As a result, by the mid-1980s, Japan had become the kingdom of robots, with nearly 70% of all robots in the world. Now, many people have heard of NASA's ill-fated Robonaut robot, but few know that it had an equally ill-fated predecessor. The agency attempted to create a robot back in the 1960s, the power-driven articulated dummy, a hydraulic android created at the IIT Research Institute in Chicago, could mimic 35 basic human movements. The robot was not supposed to land on the moon, at least not right away. At first, engineers were going to use it to test spacesuits in open space. PDAD was equipped with sensors in each joint to measure the forces acting on the human body from a pressurized spacesuit. The robot's movements were provided by oil-powered hydraulic actuators. It could rotate its hips, raise and lower its arms, shrug its shoulders, clench its fists, and even shake hands. But there was something the robot couldn't do. Unfortunately, it couldn't move without leaking oil. The nylon tubing system couldn't handle the pressure and leaked every time the robot moved. Needless to say, the project was trashed. NASA in general has always been a bit of a whiz. Here, for example, is a jetpack for open space with robotic arms, radar antenna, and docking system unveiled in 1969. The project logo alone is worth a lot. The platform was to allow astronauts to easily and safely perform, for example, spacecraft or satellite repair, build new structures in orbit, and transfer cargo. Moreover, its effective radius was supposed to be up to a mile plus or two kilometers. Unfortunately, the platforms were never decided to be deployed in space. Instead, NASA used more compact models of their manned maneuvering units, abbreviated MMU, in several missions. And then they too were replaced by the Canadarm robotic arm. All in all, many dreams have been shattered by security and practical considerations. The jet platform turned out to be one of them. Which robot spiked your dopamine most, folks? Now that you know what Polo AI can do, do you feel like looking into your family archive and bringing it to life? 
or do you prefer to create something new? Whatever it is, follow the link in the description and try Polo AI for free. You get to generate two videos to evaluate the quality and functionality of the platform and a paid subscription will give you the opportunity to create more content simultaneously without watermarks plus copyright protection. At the same time, all users, regardless of their plan, can log into the platform daily and earn free credits. By the way, check out what other users are doing. Go to Polo AI right now and unleash your full creative potential. Did we already mention that every bit of work you generate gets copyright protection? Get this awesome deal by following the link in the description and explore Polo AI for any project you got in mind. On that note, like our videos, subscribe to the channel, and check out our social media for more from the world of high tech.